he was living with my friend um, uh, William Tripp, and he uh, he'd fallen asleep in the bathtub with a candle. <laughs> And he burned the bathroom down, came running down to Neville's where I was. And he was just covered in smoke. And he was like, you got to help me, you got to help me. And we went and we finished putting the fire out and made amends to poor William who had to pay for the damage. His parents were very upset. They didn't like him being in, involved uh, with older people because everybody that lived there was older than him. And they didn't like, you know, oh, you know, the, the drinking and the drugs. And you know, it was like, you know, we don't, you know, we weren't into drugs. You know, we would sit around and drink a few beers. And, you know, we let Nathan drink. It wasn't a big deal. But he had been, you know, involved with the church. And he was, you know, the, the only son. And, you know, of course, when he moved out, his parents just really didn't like it very much. And um, they were not speaking. And I was the devil. She was uh, older than he was, and absolutely, I had reserved. I wanted to go over there and pound her in the head. But, <laughs> but uh, what are you going to do? What, what can? What do you? What do you? When you have a son, and and here I was, you know, here we were, religiously very conservative, and this older woman is seducing our child. That's the way I looked at it. And, you know, with hindsight, I suspect it was probably the other way around, but it, it, at the time, I thought that that's what was happening, and, and I didn't like it, but I also knew that Nathan would do whatever he thought you didn't want him to do, so there was no point in saying anything, and you just hoped that it, he came out unscathed. When he first moved into the house, I guess he thought he was the ladies' man, and he said to me, he was like, whatever you do, don't fall in love with me. And I was like, you don't have to worry about that, because I was, I think I was 26 at the time, and you know, he was a whopping 18, and I was like, oh, you don't have to worry about that. And it turned out, of course, you know, a couple of weeks later, he's just this lovesick puppy, and he followed me around all summer, and you know, we had a good time. Um, but he, he carried that little guitar with his everywhere he went. And when we get together, everybody got off work about the same time, and we had this beautiful porch, and we would all sit on the porch. And he would come and he would play and we'd have people come and join and um, when he left and he finally left town and I think he went down to Florida that his dad said he wrote a song um, and he told his parents that one was for me and it was the thousand miles I was at the community college taking an automotive course and met a fellow in town named, at the time his name was Tank. He was friends with some friends down off Bennett Street in a little apartment. And I got invited up there and Nathan was there. And he was, he was a, you know, young, skinny, kind of sat in the back, didn't talk a lot, but you could tell when you met him, he was, he was a really, personable fella. When you met him, you, you just liked him. And we just, I got to talking to him, we hit it off. Um, at the time, I think his parents were living off Bluebird Trail off Murdochsville, which is where I lived, off Murdochsville. So, you know, every now and again, I'd go pick him up or he'd swing by and pick me up and we'd go riding around. And he, he was probably my best friend in town. And, um, you know, he was good for, you know, he'd call you at two in the morning and want to know if you wanted to go to the beach. You know, and I'm asleep. Aw, oh, come on, let's go to the beach. And within an hour, you're halfway to the beach wondering why am I driving? How did I do? And he's beside you just laughing. 